Good afternoon, y'all. Welcome again to Niles First Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. We've made it all the way to Holy Week. We finally pass through the entirety of this Lenten season and find ourselves in the very last week before we begin to celebrate the Easter season. Uh, so we got a lot going on this week. Of course, uh, if uh, you are joining us only for our devotions, we would certainly welcome you to join in our uh, other opportunities for fellowship and worship. Uh, this Thursday, we have our Monday Thursday service at 730 uh, our Good Friday service is a Tenembrae service, which is uh, an incredibly powerful service, very uh, visceral. It's uh, known as a, a service of shadows, uh, and we will have that 7.30 on Good Friday. Uh, then we have our regular Sunday worship at 10 a.m., uh, but because it is Easter, we have the opportunity to celebrate uh, baptisms as well. So we would invite you to join in our Good our Monday, Thursday, and our Good Friday services, which are in person and uh, they'll be live streamed to Facebook just like uh, I'm doing right now uh, and will be uploaded later to YouTube. Those are available. We start in-person worship both uh, Thursday and Friday at 7.30 and our Sunday worship is, is at 10 a.m. So we invite you to partake in, in those services, to participate in whatever way you are able. If you aren't available at those times, of course, you can always check back in as the service uh, will be available on Facebook and YouTube at later times whenever is convenient for you uh, but it is holy week and uh, there is a lot of tradition uh, concerning those events that happened in that last week of Jesus's life today Wednesday there's not a whole lot going on uh, and it's interesting that uh, throughout Christian history people have laid out the exact events trying to take those those uh, stories that uh, that we hear of in the Gospels and try to lay them out to try and build the timeline of that last week uh, traditionally it goes this way so this past Sunday we celebrated Palm Sunday because it was the uh, commemoration of Christ uh, triumphantly entering Jerusalem for the last time or at least uh, going into the city and being present around the city at uh, at Bethany uh, and Mount, the Mount of Olives and, and being right around Jerusalem uh, but Sunday is the day that he entered in uh, so we wave palm branches and spread cloaks just like those that uh, met him at the Golden Gate as he entered the, the city of Jerusalem Monday is the day traditionally that he cleansed the temple uh, and uh, well I've preached about that quite a bit so if you want to uh, learn a little bit more about why Jesus cleansed the temple or why Jesus entered uh, triumphantly on that Sunday um, I, I would invite you to check out uh, some of our past sermons uh, throughout the season of Lent but Sunday was a triumphal entry Monday he cleansed the temple uh, Tuesday was the Olivet Discourse and Wednesday is well there's not really anything uh, it's certainly a part of Holy Week, but today we don't have much mention in the Gospels of what Jesus was up to. Of course, it bears mentioning that there was quite a bit that must have been going on. It just wasn't recorded in that way, and we'll get back to that in just a second. Thursday, then, was uh, the Passover meal, uh, the arrest in Gethsemane, Friday, the trials, the death and the burial, Saturday, the waiting as, as Christ laid in the tomb, and Sunday, the resurrection. I wanted to talk about this a little bit today because, uh, it, especially as today we fall on Wednesday, it might seem like there was nothing going on, but uh, we can rest assured that Jesus must have been very busy on this Wednesday uh, as they were preparing, as everyone was pre preparing for that Passover uh, Seder meal. Uh, because, of course, Jesus was, was Jewish. Uh, he was celebrating that high festival of, uh, of Passover, uh, which remembered uh, the Hebrews' flight from Egypt and uh, the, the, the quick preparation. Uh, much of the Seder meal focuses on their quick departure from Egypt and into the wilderness. So it takes a lot of preparation. All the work has to be done beforehand uh, and everything set forth for that, that special meal. Uh, so Wednesday, it, it's fair to say, and, and I think that this is a preachable moment, uh, that even though it seemed like nothing was recorded for Wednesday, Jesus was busy. 
And most certainly God was busy. I think it's a preachable moment because it sometimes seems uh, that we don't always see what is going on. But certainly in those moments of quiet, in those moments where it seems like there is a lull, we can rest assured that God is working on the background, that God is doing and planning for and accomplishing great things. So even today, where it seems like there is a lull in this Holy Week, where it seems like there is a, a, a quietness, uh, it is an expectant quietness. It's an anticipated quietness because God is working on the background leading us into uh, Easter Sunday. But there's a bit of a problem with the way this, this week is laid out, I guess. Uh, this is very much tradition. It's, it's Bible scholars and church mothers and fathers that have read these four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, and and tried to harmonize them in such a way that we can figure out what Jesus did that last week. What always confused me when I was a kid is that we have been told, and Jesus proclaimed that uh, he, would, he would be gone for three days. And math has never been my strong suit, but I couldn't figure out that if Jesus uh, was crucified on Friday and he was in the tomb on Saturday and he rose on Sunday, that's, that's not three days. Well, that's one day. That's Saturday, right? Now, I've heard this uh, explained uh, in different ways uh, by different folks, and some say, and actually the way that I heard it explained when I first raised that question when I was a kid, uh, was that there are actually three days if you count them by the way that uh, Jewish folks count days, which is sundown, uh, if you've ever celebrated um if you've ever se celebrated a, a Jewish festival, uh, if it's Pesach or, or any of the Shalosh Regalim or um, even uh, um, Hanukkah, you'll know that you know when you celebrate Hanukkah, you light the candle uh, at, at dusk because that is the beginning of the next day. Uh, so if you count it that way, well, then Friday, because uh, we know that uh, Friday was the the trial, the crucifixion, and the burial. They had to have them buried, uh, as I've been told, uh, before the Sabbath, because you can't work on the Sabbath. So they must have had them buried Friday evening, uh, according to tradition. So that's one day, uh, before, Friday before sundown. So that's Friday. And then Saturday. Uh, Sunday would then be the third day, if you count it that way. Bit of a problem with that. Um, I, 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 you know, I accepted it as truth then, uh, but as I've been reading up on this, there is uh, quite a, a, a following that we've had these days wrong all along, uh, and that Passover, which would be considered uh, a, a special Sabbath day, a yearly Sabbath day rather than a weekly Sabbath day, uh, was actually the Sabbath that they were preparing for, and that probably took place on Wednesday. Now, if that took place on Wednesday, uh, then the, the crucifixion was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday does give you three days. This might be a little uncomfortable for you because, well, tradition gives us a lot of our understanding of faith. Um, and when we question or challenge tradition, it might give you a little uh, uncomfortable feeling in the pit of your stomach, that, that cognitive dissonance there, that uh, we're cautious in challenging because, well, if we challenge too much tradition, when might it lead us to actually challenging the things that matter, our concepts of salvation or reconciliation or redemption? Um, all of these things... For a person of faith, we should be able to question uh, faithfully. Uh, certainly, and well, well uh, as we, we come up uh, quickly on the story of Doubting Thomas, I always, and I'm sure I'll talk about this later, I always view the story of Doubting Thomas. Thomas is, a, is really not in the wrong in any way. He's, he's questioning so that he might be a part of the story and a part of the narrative. Uh, so it's not wrong to question these things. Uh, it's wrong if we throw them out wholesale. But to question things often leads towards greater faith. Uh, having a better understanding allows us to incorporate uh, things that we might not have considered or things that we might have dismissed previously into our faith in a way that allows us to grow and indeed to grow closer to each other and to God. 
So hopefully I'm not challenging you too much here. Uh, whether Holy Week had gone truly the way that uh, you were taught growing up or uh, if it's completely different, you know, it shouldn't affect our faith uh, because it's tradition. What matters this Holy Week, however you approach it, is that we continue in faith, that we continue questioning that we might find answers, that we continue discussing with each other in, in loving dialogue, that we might understand something that is beyond ourselves. Uh, and the greater these conversations can be, the more loving and, and the larger circles that we can build to have these conversations, uh, not only about the meaning of tradition in our lives, uh, not only about the way God reveals God's self to us, uh, but just in the way that we understand each other and understand God leads us to greater faith. So I continue to challenge you this Lenten season as we, we quickly run out of time, as we approach the cross and what lays beyond it. Uh, I, I continue to challenge you to have conversations in faith, uh, but also to be introspective about what this faith is calling you to. Why do we celebrate Holy Week if not that the uh, crucifixion and the resurrection leads us into different lives, into life abundant, uh, which means that something about what we're doing right now is not the fullness of what God intends for us. And we've spoken about this continuously as we uh, consider uh, the nature of sin throughout this Lenten season and as we consider different atonement models. Uh, what is it that we are saved from and what is it that we are saved by and what is it we are saved to? What is it about this Holy Week that we celebrate, that we so revere? What is, is, is it about the actions and the death and the resurrection of Christ that leads us to this new life? And what is it that we are failing at now? So in these last few days of Lent, I continue to, uh, to challenge you, to invite you, to look within yourselves and to look within the failings of our culture and society, to bring these failings, these confessions to our God, to move in contrition, to reform your life and indeed the society around you, that we might be reconciled as one people to our God. Go in peace. Amen. Oh,